I'm sorry. Help me. This is too much. I apologize. Please do something. As my mother-in-law and husband desperately begged me for help, I asked the first thing that popped into my mind. Why are you guys asking me for help? What have I done to you? I have no idea what's going on with you two and how I can help. Anyway, I have something else to do. I turned my back on them, ignoring the frantic begging in agony behind me and left. I am Eileen. I was a 27 year old secretary, and my husband Aaron was 29 years old back then. He was an advertising agent and worked for a different company from me. We met because our offices are in the same building and got married two years later. My in-laws lived a short flight away. My mother-in-law Yvonne was left alone after her husband passed away last year. Aaron, being the eldest son, took her in without any discussion. Although we still lived separately, we were just on different floors in the same apartment building. She was, to put it nicely, sassy and a bit impatient, and I was more of a think-before-act type. We were polar opposite in terms of personality and did not get along well. She seemed to get frustrated with my slow speech and action every time. She thought it was better to do things quickly, even if the result was 60 points. She often suffered a loss as a result of proceeding without thinking things through. No matter how hard I tried to adjust to her way, I could not agree with her completely. For example, my wedding. When it came to choosing a venue, Just pick one already! She scolded me and then recommended a cheap place that was available for the earliest booking without checking the service carefully. At that time, I had narrowed down my choices to a few and was planning to visit each place. What are you procrastinating about? In the end, all venues are more or less the same. Stop wasting your time worrying about tiny details. Considering our future relationship, I decided to follow her advice. However, the venue was located in a hard-to-reach area, and there was a patchy cellular connection. In addition, we were served a lower-grade course because they weren't able to get the originally planned ingredients on the day. Aaron and I were frowned upon by the guest. Yvonne told the relatives who had complained to her. Eileen insisted on having a reception here. We tried to reason with her, but she didn't budge. Thanks to her, I was recognized by her relatives as a bride who was not only selfish, but also unable to offer the least hospitality. I complained to Aaron about that. We were all family now. You should forgive her. Besides, you agreed to have it there in the end. He took her side, and I was left frustrated. Those misunderstandings continued to happen over and over again after the wedding. You are really slow and clumsy. It's a waste of time for me to be with you. You make me wait all the time, and I'm really tired of it. Can't you respect other people's time? She started to criticize me blatantly. That happened because she changed the plan earlier due to her impatience, and I was just on time. I'm sorry, but I just followed the original schedule. Are you telling me it's my fault? Can't you be more flexible? I'm not saying it's your fault, but I have other plans too. Surely you are not that selfish to think that everyone else should accommodate you. Who do you think you are talking to? Don't you dare talk back to me. I knew that Aaron wasn't going to deal with her, so I stopped being nice and directly addressed her. She probably never dreamed of being talked back by me. She became so furious that you could boil water on her head. She told Aaron about that in a very exaggerated manner, and I was yelled at by him later. Why are you so selfish? Stop irritating my mother! He became completely on her side after that. At that time, my father-in-law was still alive and gave her a slap on her wrist. If you can't be nice to your daughter-in-law, 
It's only a matter of time before this house will cease to exist. When that happens, who will take the responsibility? You have always pushed other people around and caused nothing but trouble. I've been the one to clean up your mess every time. You forget that, and you're being a nuisance to others again? And he gave Aaron a lesson as well. How long are you going to be controlled by your mother? You have your own family now. When your wife is in trouble, you don't even take her side, but tell her off. Shame on you! Thanks to his reproach that their behavior, which could have been seen as bullying, was kept under control. Aaron was actually a really good husband as long as Yvonne wasn't involved. He always prepared a surprise gift for me on my birthday and took the initiative to help me with the housework on his days off. His attitude changed drastically when she was and wasn't around. At that time, we had no significant relationship, and I only saw them during Easter and Christmas. I thought that if I endured those events, I could have a relatively happy married life. However, just one year into our marriage, my father-in-law became ill and was hospitalized. He passed away despite his treatment. I wondered what Yvonne was going to do. My mom is moving in downstairs next month, and we are going to take care of her. Aaron suddenly announced. What? What do you mean we are going to take care of her? Why didn't you tell me anything about this? I'm the eldest son, of course. I should take care of her now that she's all alone. And since you don't like her, I rented a separate apartment instead of having her move in with us. I'm making a compromise for you, so don't complain. When my father-in-law passed away, I thought we might have needed to take care of her. I never imagined that I was going to be forced to do so without any consultation. I became distrustful of him because of his insensitive behavior. I was also concerned about my future life with him, who would have most likely taken her side if we had a confrontation. I began to a bit cautious in my daily life. Such days were exhausting, and as I feared, Yvonne harassed me in various ways. Moreover, Aaron even suggested that I clean not only our house but hers on my days off. I always help you with the chores. She is getting old and tired, so go and help her. I mean, I can do it too, but she's going to be around for a long time. It's a good opportunity to patch up your relationship with her. I decided to take up his advice in the hope that things would improve. It must be hard for you to do all the house things. I was wondering if there was anything I could do to help. I don't know what a clumsy girl like you can do for me. Well, that's okay. I don't have enough furniture, so could you get me some? Sure. Should I pay first and can you reimburse me later? You live on Aaron's income, don't you? Why don't you pay from there? He said I was free to spend it however I wanted. When I was about to refuse, she lashed out loudly. Just go! I will let him know later. I didn't have the energy to talk back and readied myself to go shopping as she ordered. Then I realized that the things she asked me to buy were large shelves and a coffee table, all of which were difficult to carry by myself. I'm sorry, but these are all big and heavy things. I'd rather wait and go with Aaron. Are you serious? He works so hard. Are you going to make him work even more on his day off? Do you even care about him? If I talked back to her even a little bit, she got upset and yelled at me harshly. I gave up and decided to obey her. Furthermore, Aaron gave her the duplicate key to our house, so she entered without permission while we were at work. She began to open the mail and ransack the bedroom. She may be your mother, but to me she's an outsider. I can't stand it when she comes in and out of our house freely peeks into our bedroom and opens our mail without permission. Ask her to stop. He responded with an okay okay at the moment, but her behavior did not improve. 
I thought that if things continued as they were, divorce would have been the only option. I felt I was losing my feelings for him. Then, one Friday, Aaron had a day off. I came back from work to find Yvonne relaxing in the living room as if it were her home. Surprisingly, when she noticed me, she made an unusual gesture. Oh, you are back! Hi, Yvonne. I went shopping with Aaron today and found a delicious looking cake. You have been very kind to me, so I bought it as a thank you and put it in the fridge. I tripped earlier and it crumbled a little. I'm sorry. I was astounded, and then Aaron joined in. We'll go to a furniture store a bit farther away tomorrow. Mom really wants a bed from there. You're off, so come with us. It's late to have the cake tonight, so let's have it before we go out tomorrow. He was grinning derisively, and I got a hunch that the cake wasn't an honest gift. Okay, why don't we leave after lunch then? Satisfied, the two of them went to clean Yvonne's apartment in preparation for the new bed. I checked the cake in the fridge after they were gone. There was a round chocolate cake that had clearly been tampered with in one place. I could easily have guessed that Yvonne was going to make me eat that questionable part. To cover it up, I ran to a deli and bought a chocolate bar. I melted it down and reapplied it to the top of the cake so that no traces of it could be seen. I moved the strawberry on top a little so that only I could see the questionable part. The next day, Yvonne came over a little earlier than scheduled. Good morning, you're just in time. I just finished preparing the cake, so please have a seat. I tried to fix the crumble part. Oh, of course, I will eat that part, so it may not matter to you. Oh my, that's unusual for you. You got things done ahead of time, and you've even learned to be considerate. Is Aaron up yet? I'm sure he will be up soon. Immediately after, he came to the living room after waking up from sleep. When he got ready to go, the three of us decided to have the cake. He wasn't much of a fan of sweets. Mom, have mine. He handed his plate to her after eating half of his slice. She finished the other half happily. Meanwhile, they both grinned at each other, watching me eat. I knew they had done something to the cake. I thought there was something extremely spicy or bitter in it. The two, who were supposed to be eating the part in question, showed no sign, and I was honestly disappointed. As soon as we finished, Well, let's go. Can you drive home? Aaron handed me the car key, and just as we were about to leave, Eileen, you should go to the restroom before we head out. It's quite a long way to the store. I'm fine. Besides, we will use the highway, so it would be quick. Then, when we were getting on the highway, How much longer until we get there? Asked Aaron with a pale complexion. Um, about an hour and a half, I think. Can I use the restroom somewhere? Eileen, did you really eat the crumbled part? Following Aaron, Yvonne, who was breaking out in a cold sweat, asked me from the back. Of course I did. I wouldn't let you or Aaron eat the damaged part. You don't look so good. Are you feeling okay? I need to use the restroom too, so stop anywhere you can. I sensed that both of them were suffering from sudden stomach aches from their appearance. My mischievous spirit got the better of me and I dared to drive slower and pass the first exit. Come on! I mean, how come you're okay? What are you talking about? Aaron looked like he was trying very hard not to yell at me and asked a bizarre question. No, it's nothing. I mean, you guys did something to the cake, didn't you? It's obvious. If you don't tell me honestly, I will skip the next exit. I could see them gasp. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, so you're not going to tell me. It's a laxative. 
We put a laxative in it. I wanted to teach you a little lesson. My hunch was right. I was so glad that I reapplied the chocolate the night before. Please get off here. I let them out of the car at a gas station we had just arrived at. As soon as they stepped outside, Aaron gasped, Ugh. I heard him curse in a whisper. Then a faint stench hit my nose, and it was clear to us all that the worst had happened. You guys are not feeling well, so stay here and rest. I'm sorry, help me. This is too much. I apologize. Please do something. Why are you guys asking me for help? What did I do to you? I have no idea what's going on with you two, and how can I help? Anyway, I have something else to do. Ignoring their frantic pleading and begging, I started the car and rushed home. When I got there, I packed up my belongings and evacuated to my friend's house. I then went to see a lawyer with my journal, which had details of Yvonne and Aaron's bullying, and the data of recorded conversation about the laxatives. Later, I was told that they called a car service to get home. Damn you! The car service is charging me for dry cleaning because of you! You pay for it! Why should I? I mean, how did you make such a mess? I questioned Aaron, who called me in a rage. But he must have felt embarrassed to explain and became silent. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm divorcing you. Please speak to my lawyer from now on. I'm sure you will get a letter soon. Wait, why are you talking about divorce? Of course, you enjoyed bullying me with your mom. Not only that, you guys even tried to drug me. I can't live with someone like that. More importantly, an adult man who leaked. I couldn't help but burst into laughter. Yvonne, who was apparently listening in on the speaker, screamed, We don't want a woman like you anyway! Don't ever show your face in front of us again! Um, Yvonne, I will make sure to bill you for the furniture and other things. Let me make something clear to you. I earn more than Aaron does. I paid for you out of my premarital savings. She was screaming on and on about something, but I ignored her and hung up the phone. A few weeks later, my lawyer told me that Aaron had negotiated to pay alimony in installments, and Yvonne refused to repay me. When my lawyer told her that I could file a police report about the drugging, she agreed to my request. I refused to accept Aaron's installment offer. You have your father's inheritance, don't you? So please pay me in one lump sum. In the end, he agreed to pay me by giving up most of the inheritance. His income alone was not enough to cover his rent, so he moved to an inexpensive apartment with his unemployed mother. The last time I saw him was at the gas station with a very pale face. I left everything to my lawyer, and our divorce was finalized without needing me to face him again. I accepted a transfer that my work had approached me. I have now started a new life in a new city. My lawyer tells me that she is sometimes contacted by Aaron about getting back together. I have all that handled by her. I am out of my difficult life in which I had no one on my side and was being attacked by two people. I am enjoying my freedom while I am busy working hard in a new position. Now that I have received a lot of alimony, I'm thinking of going on a trip once my work is settled.